Hello friends, this video on surface chemistry part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next is enzyme catalysis. See, in the body, most of the reaction that takes place, that, for example, digestion of food, everything happens because of enzymes. We have studied this, these are my enzymes, right? And what are enzymes? Enzymes are complex nitrogenous organic compound. So we have seen this enzymes are like complex nitrogenous compounds or organic compounds. Correct, they're complex nitrogenous organic compounds and they are produced in living bodies, uh, plants, animals, right? So they are protein molecules of high molecular mass. These are nothing but these are proteins, high molecular mass. They are very, very, very efficient catalyst. Right? It catalyzes large number of reactions that occurs in the body of humans and animals. So I can say enzymes are nothing but biochemical catalyst. And we have studied a lot about this in uh, a chapter I remember. Catalyst. You can watch video on that where you can see all these uh, enzymes acting, I mean, the biochemical catalyst, that's enzymes, how it works and why it works. They work uh, primarily because of their complex structure, because of their size on the shape, right? And the first enzyme was synthesized in 1969. Please note, it's not very, not very old, only 1969, not even 50 years to now, right? This first enzyme was synthesized in 1969 in the lab. So if you want to know more about the enzyme catalysis, you can watch the videos which we have created on this enzyme catalysis. I will take some examples. See, enzyme catalysis, there are so many examples. The first example I could think of is the cane sugar if you have the inversion of cane sugar in the presence of inverter. This is my cane sugar. So what is done is we give some uh, enzymes here, inverters. And with this, the inversion is fast. C12, S22, O11, some water, cane sugar. We use this inverted enzyme. And what you get is glucose and fructose. Right? Glucose and fructose. So this is one good example of uh, enzymes. The second good example of uh, in enzymes are my conversion of glucose to ethyl alcohol. I have my glucose. I use an enzyme called zymase to convert this into ethyl alcohol. Obviously, carbon dioxide will also come out. Correct. This is my glucose. It converts into ethyl alcohol in the presence of zymase. The next example I can give you is starch. You want to convert this into maltose. You use enzyme. For example, I can take you example of a starch. For example, C6H10O5N. This is my starch. And I'll use uh, some water molecule here, obviously. And I use maltose uh, enzyme named diastase. This will convert into maltose. One more example I can give you for the enzyme. There's only examples. One is the maltose you want to convert into glucose. If you want to convert this maltose into glucose, you can use this enzyme actually called maltase. So I have a maltose. I want to convert this into glucose. I use enzyme called maltase. Right? So maltase, maltose to glucose using maltase. We can take for example decomposition of urea. So I have a urea. It has to be decomposed to let's suppose ammonia and carbon dioxide. So for that we will use urease. So if you see here NH2CO, NH2, this is my urea. And I will use this uh, urease. I get this 
ammonia and carbon dioxide. So more examples if you want we can give you is uh, protein to peptides. In the stomach this happens, protein to peptides and this happens in the presence of a, a again enzyme called peptide. This happens in the stomach. Again one more example from protein you want to convert into amino acid we can use enzyme called trypsin right one more example if you want we can have this milk this is a very good example and this this protein to amino acid happens in the intestine of the human body from milk if you want to convert this to curd which we use in our life day to day life we use lactobacillus enzyme lacto b a C I double L I lactobacillus enzyme. So this enzyme is used to convert milk to curd. Now let's talk about the characteristics of this enzyme catalysis. The first one is they are most highly efficient. See, one millions of reactant per minute. It can form product one millions of reactants per minute. It's very 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 efficient. A very very efficient. It is highly specific. See, one catalyst can or one enzyme's catalyst. If we talk about, they can't catalyze more than one reaction, right? So they are very very specific, and that's why we have so many medicines coming in because these medicines catalyze only one or few reactions. They're very specific. They are highly active under optimum temperature. If you talk about the enzyme catalyst, if you see most of the enzyme catalysts work in the body and in body has optimum temperature. So these catalysts generally work at optimum temperature. At a very high temperature or the, at a very low temperature, these enzymes don't work. They have an optimum temperature of almost 298 to 310 Kelvin. Let me not, not write down the temperature. 298 to 310 Kelvin. This is the optimum temperature range where this guy works. And if you see the human body is at 310 Kelvin. This is our human body temperature. Right? It has optimum pH again since uh, our body also has optimum pH. It's not very acidic nor very basic. So it works in the pH range of 5 to 7. And the increasing activity in the presence of activators and coenzymes. So we have seen that the small amount of activators it can increase the activity of this enzymes and these vitamins are generally activators right in the body to see that small amount of vitamins along with these enzymes can make miracle so na plus mn plus co plus cu plus all these uh, cop uh, metal metal ions right so sodium ions copper ions these are activators example i can give you this amylase uh, enzymes, right? This is very very powerful in the presence of sodium ions. This sodium is a activator, so act it responds a lot to activator. Correct? We have seen something called activator and poisons, so it it, it uh, responds to activators. That's what I have told. It, the, there is a good influence of inhibitors and poisons also. So these enzymes are inhibited or poisoned, you can say, or actually by certain inhibitors. And the, what they do is this inhibitors actually they interact uh, with the active functional functionality of these enzymes, and they reduce the catalytic action of these enzymes. And if you see, most of the medicines are inhibitors. Most of medicines we take are inhibitors. Are inhibitors. See, actually, it's a very simple rule. It's very difficult to break something, but very, very, very easy to break something, but very difficult to make something, right? So, medicines also it has two options: either create something, create something, do something good, or inhibit. So, for medicine also, inhibit is something like breaking things. It's easy. So, most of the medicines are having inhibitor effect. So, if you're having pain, this uh, medicines which is painkiller will do nothing, but it will try to uh, what do you call? somehow get the message from where you are getting the pain and somehow it will block 
these messages from going to brain. So you'll feel that you're not getting pain, but actually it will not do anything. It will just inhibit. So most of the medicines in the market has inhibit, inhib, what do you call, inhibitory effect, except uh, the antibiotics, but most of the painkillers we take, Crocin, Dolo, any medicines, we, most of the medicines we take, they are having this inhibitory influence. So these were the characteristics of the catalyst, the, the enzyme catalyst. They are efficient, they are specific in nature, uh, they, they are active under optimum temperature, optimum pH, and they are highly impacted because of the activators and the coenzymes, and they have a huge uh, impact of inhibitors and poison salts. If we talk about the mechanism of enzymes, we have seen this in the last few chapters, right? So, in fact, if you talk about the enzymes, they have a peculiar shape, right? They have cavities here. They have this is my enzymes. Right? The gray color is my enzymes. This enzymes that uh, have a particular shape, and that's why they are so much selective. So this is active site of this enzyme and substrate, the reactant, combine here, right? And then they form a intermediate product, and it's easy to break, and they break apart. So since this enzyme is of this shape, it will take only substrate of this shape. It won't take a subtract which is of this shape, let's suppose, right? It won't take, it will take only subtract which have of this shape and that's why this enzyme is selective, right? So these uh, subtract and this enzymes, they, they, their shape are complemented to each other. And these substrate actually fits into this cavities, correct? Again, the activated complex is formed and it decomposes to form product. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.